Hello and welcome to the third lecture on permutations and combinations. Uh, in the last few lectures, uh, we've looked at some introductory concepts on permutations and combinations, where we looked at number of arrangements of n distinct objects, or also at the cases when the objects, not all objects, are distinct. Uh, so, for this lecture, I refer the viewer to uh, the lecture series on the binomial theorem, where some of the related concepts are covered in the first lecture uh, of that series. I will briefly go over the concepts which we require for this lecture again, uh, but for more detailed explanations, I refer the viewer to the uh, to lecture one on the binomial theorem. Uh, so, in the previous lectures, we've looked at the concept of n factorial, which is basically the number of ways of arranging n distinct objects. And when we say uh, arranging, we mean arranging in a row or in a line. Uh, we also looked at the concept of NPR, which is the number of ways of selecting are objects from n distinct objects. and arranging them. So you first select R objects from N distinct objects, and then you arrange those R objects uh, in a row. That is NPR. And this, we noticed, was a generalization of the concept of N factorial. And this was given by N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. So in, in this lecture, uh, we will look at uh, a third related concept, which is the concept of NCR which is the number of ways of selecting R objects from N distinct objects. And so now we only care about selecting our objects from n distinct objects. We don't care about the arrangements within them. Uh, and so you can derive this quantity to be n factorial divided by uh, n minus r factorial times r factorial. An interpretation for this formula is you, you have the number of ways of selecting and arranging r objects from n distinct objects, which is npr. And then you divide by r factorial, which is the number of ways of arranging those r objects within themselves. And so you get uh, the quantity ncr. So in this case, we uh, only allow selecting uh, each object once. So we assume that once we've selected an object, we can't select it again. So this is the case when we are not allowed to repeat the selection of an object. In the case when you're allowed to, if you can select an object more than once, then the number of ways of selecting R objects from N distinct objects with repetition is given by N plus R minus 1 CR. So again, uh, to highlight this is with repetition. So the derivation of this result is uh, not very simple. Uh, and I refer the viewer to standard uh, literature on, on this topic uh, for a derivation. L later in this lecture series, we will look at one uh, very powerful technique, which can also be used to derive this result. But we shall avoid the derivation for now. So uh, we now have these three quantities, n factorial, n p r, and n c r. And uh, it, it might be uh, the viewer might already know that there are some properties of these uh, binomial coefficients 
which which are satisfied and all these quantities can't vary uh, randomly they're all related to each other in some fashion so we in this lecture we'll look at some of the properties of NCR Once again, we've uh, already looked at the properties of NCR in the binomial theorem chapter. And so I'll just provide the properties, and I won't go into too many details of how they can actually be derived. So the first property uh, is that NC0 equals NCN equals 1. So the number of ways of choosing zero objects from n distinct objects equals the number of ways of choosing n objects from n distinct objects, and this equals 1. And that's intuitively very obvious to us. But we, but we can also derive this by looking at uh, the formula for NCR and plugging in the suitable values to obtain this result. The second property is that NCR equals NC n minus r. Once again, uh, you can derive this result just by plugging in suitable values in the definition of NCR. And this just tells us the number of ways of choosing r objects from n distinct objects equals the number of ways of choosing n minus r objects from n distinct objects. A third property which will be useful in many situations is ncr plus ncr minus 1 equals n plus 1 cr. And the final property we'll look at is r times ncr equals n times n minus 1 c r minus 1. So these are some of the useful properties of NCR, which will be useful time and again as we move on. Um, and we've already seen some of the applications of these properties in uh, the binomial theorem chapter. So let's look at a few examples uh, based on uh, NCR. So the first uh, example asks us to determine uh, the number of triangles that can be formed by joining the vertices of a hexagon. And for this example, we've chosen an hexagon so that uh, the user can work this out uh, by enumeration. But in general, you can, uh, the question can be generalized to how many triangles can be formed by joining the vertices of an n gon, where n can be arbitrarily large. So since we've looked at hexagon for this example, let's sketch out a hexagon. So the hexagon has six vertices, uh, which are being highlighted here. And the question asks you to find the number of triangles that can be formed by joining the vertices of a hexagon. So if we pick three adjacent vertices, can we form a triangle? Yes, we can, because the three adjacent vertices are not collinear. If we pick three non-adjacent vert uh, vertices, uh, can we form a triangle? Yes. So you, the viewer can verify that you can form a triangle by selecting any three vertices of a hexagon. And so the answer just turns out to be the number of ways in which you can choose three vertices of a hexagon uh, to form a triangle. And this turns out to be 6C3. And you can evaluate what that turns out to be. Now, a related question you can ask is, how many diagonals does a hexagon have? Now, uh, looking at the previous example, uh, you might be tempted to say that the answer has to be 6C2 because uh, a diagonal is defined by two vertices of a hexagon. Well, that's almost true, but uh, you've got to be careful when you're counting that all combinations are valid. In the case of the triangle, we saw that choosing any three vertices of the hexagon is going to result in a triangle, whereas 
uh, choosing any two vertices of a hexagon uh, might not result in a diagonal because if you choose this vertex of a hexagon, which is which corresponds to adjacent this edge of a hexagon, which corresponds to adjacent vertices, uh, then that does not form a diagonal. Whereas if you choose any two non-adjacent vertices of a hexagon, then joining them will result in a diagonal of the hexagon. So jo joining any two non-adjacent vertices will result in a diagonal of the hexagon. And so the number of ways is 62, where we allow choosing any two vertices of the hexagon, but now we have to subtract the number of adjacent vert vertex pairs of the hexagon. So for each vertex, uh, so, so each edge of the hexagon uh, has to be discounted in this, in this sum. Uh, so the number of edges of the hexagon is just 6. So the answer is 62 minus 6. Um, yeah. So if, if you count the 6 in a different fashion, if you count the 6 by looking at the number of adjacent pairs, then you'd be, uh, you've got to be careful not to overcount the edges, because each vertex has two adjacent vertices. And so you might be tempted to subtract 12 instead of 6 from this result. But notice that in that case, you'd be counting each edge of the hexagon twice, but you only want to count it, discount it once. And so the result is going to be 6A2 minus 6 uh, in this case. Let's look at a third example. This example states that a box contains five distinct red balls and six distinct green balls. In how many ways can six balls be chosen so that we have at least two balls of each color? So you have five distinct red balls and six distinct green balls. Uh, so in total, you have 11 distinct balls. And the question asks you, how many ways can you choose six balls so that you have at least two balls of each color? So the only possibilities uh, uh, for choosing six balls is that you have two balls of each color. Are you choose two red balls and four green balls, or you choose three red balls and three green balls, or you choose four red balls and two green balls. So these are the only three cases where you can choose six balls so that you have at least uh, two balls of each color. So this is very easy to enumerate. And now you can look at the number of ways of selecting each of these combinations. So for the case of two red balls and four green balls, you've got to choose two red balls from five distinct red balls. And so the number of ways is 5C2. And you've got to choose four green balls from six distinct green balls. So the number of ways is 6C4. By the fundamental pr principle of counting, the number of ways of choosing two red balls and four green balls is just the product of these two quantities. Um, similarly, the second case, you have three red balls and three green balls. So that's got to be 5C3 times 6C3. And in the third case, you've got to uh, choose four red balls and two green balls. And so that's going to be 5C4 times 6C2. So the number of ways in which uh, we can choose uh, six balls so that we have at least two balls of each color is the sum of these three quantities. Uh, so you can sum that up. And that turns out to be 425. So there are 425 different ways in which we can choose six balls so that uh, the property is satisfied. So that's it for this lecture. I hope you uh, learned about the fundamentals of NCR in this lecture. In the next lecture, we will look at a few more related properties in permutations and combinations. I thank you for your attention.